Supervisors who comply are appointed. I was a supervisor, a branch chief. First thing they did was they took me in the office and they said, sit down. We want you to, two of your employees, we want you to rate them down on their performance appraisals because we just want them to know who's in charge and that they need to comply with us. And I said, well, sir, they're both high performers. I couldn't ask for a better employee. They said, no, we're ordering you to do that. And if you don't do that, if you don't comply with us, we're going to put a memo in your file that's going to stay with you the rest of your career. You know what they were doing? They were vetting me. What do you think I did? I answered to a higher authority. Uh, I came back the next day and I said, uh, I rated them both high on their performance appraisals. That's what they deserved. They're good employees. I went and I sat down and said, I rated them what they deserve. You know, make my day. So they put a letter in my file. I said, fine, do what you want to do. A year later, both of those guys were removed from their positions for corruption. But anyway, uh, that's how they do it. Um, the supervisor will take you in, take the employee in and say, you know, Jane or Fred, I know you're concerned about this incident in Syria, but you know, there have been other employees who've kind of reported that same kind of thing. And, and uh, well, you saw what happened to them. You know, they lost their career. and Sadly, they were fired. And, you know, we don't want that to happen to you. So just be careful. Everybody knows what that means. Do it and you're, and you're gone. If they, if they proceed, they're they start being de denied promotions that they, they are qualified for. They're put away in embarrassing assignments, which is a message to them and all of their coworkers. See what happens if you rock the boat. This is their, this is their method of operation. This is how they do it. Uh, any reporting documents, that, any evidence that they have, remember the assassination vulnerability, is lost or destroyed. Oh, we can't find it. We don't know where that went. Well, it's not on the headquarters server anymore. We don't know what happened. That's what they'll do. Let's say the employee files a grievance, an internal grievance system with the IG, the investigations group that every agency has. Only problem is IG members, at least uh, with intelligence agencies, are career members of that agency. I had someone come out that was a high-level IG member and tell me that when my case hit, they were so freaked out it was going to hit the press and they're going to find out what they were doing. The IG itself tried to silence me. The group that's supposed to, that I filed a grievance with that was lost from the system, was supposed to assist me, was, became, uh, I was targeted by the very group that was supposed to represent me. That's how they do it. It's part of the system. And the evidence that I had, and I had to go any, any much further on this, I had a full documented report of the poisoning, the doctor's diagnosis, the environmental tests I had. I sent it through official channels to headquarters, called, and they said they never got it. So having the access, I went into headquarters, I went down into the internal cable system, and I talked to Doug, last name not to be known. And I said, Doug, I've, I sent this uh, internal uh, investigation file, and they say they haven't received it. You, and this is all through the in, in, internal channels. Very controlled system. Doug went in there. I was sitting right next to him. He goes, uh, I don't believe this. I said, what do you mean you don't believe what? He goes, it's gone. I said, what do you mean it's gone? It's, it's officially tracked document. He goes, no, it's disappeared from the system. He said, I've never seen this before. I said, well, Doug, you, this has never happened. He goes, this doesn't happen. This is an official system. These documents are all tracked. This one is gone. I said, well, can we get it back? And he goes, no, man, it's gone forever. I don't know what the heck happened here. I left there, and I'm like, ooh, man, the fun has started. So let's say the employee files a legal suit. Now, this is in Chapter 25 of the book, I think, Tyranny of Secrecy. Let's say the employee files a legal suit against the CIA or the NSA. And this is where it gets fun. They let me publish this in the book, too, how they do it. They just wouldn't let me publish who they did it to. This is how they do it. You file a suit against, uh, let's say, the CIA. The CIA will block any outside attorneys and only let you use an attorney approved by them on their list. Kangaroo court already, maybe? It gets worse than that, man. The, the CIA demands all of the evidence that your attorneys have or you have. They demand you have to provide it to the CIA or you've committed a national security violation. Even, even notes with your attorneys that are taken in their office have got to be turned over to the CIA and controlled in CIA locked safes, then classified by the CIA, even though that it's your evidence and your attorney's notes. That's what they do. Otherwise, you've committed a national security violation. Then they hold and control all documents, everything, control of the case. My attorneys tried to get, they had documents. Uh, they demanded the CIA give them a safe. They were never provided that. So all of my attorney's uh, documents and evidence, the evidence of my report, reports, were forcefully kept uh, in a safe inside CIA headquarters where we never saw them again, never saw the light of day. They classify all unclassified information. The outside environmental report I secretly had done was blacked out. The guy was shot in the head. Who knows where that 
I'm not going to go there right now. They took that document, classified it, blacked it out, and retained it in, in headquarters so no one could see it. It was now a controlled document. So they classify and classify information. They intentionally dragged the case out for years. They got a staff of 10 CIA attorneys that are getting paid eight hours a day no matter what they do, and you. So they can stretch, and they do. They'll stretch that case out for eight to 10 years while you pay your attorney by the hour and drain you financially. About halfway through the process, if you last that long, you're bankrupt. And they know that. Their attorneys get paid a salary every day for four years. They, get, they have nothing to lose, no problem. And if your case is strong and you got them, the judge told my attorneys, uh, I think Mr. Ship has them over a barrel. See, I was them. I caught them with a break-in. I had tapes of them breaking in. I had, I had affidavits from the guards of them destroying documents. Man, I had the whole, I was two steps ahead of them every single time they pulled this because I was trained by them. I was two steps ahead and we had them. We had them. Um, so all they have to do is invoke the state secrets privilege and then they can take all the hard evidence and seal it and it's over. It's gone. Not even congressmen and your senators have access to it. And if you talk about your case, this, the poisoning or anything else, if you talk about your case to anyone, you can go to prison for violating that. Or in my case, my wife and kids, my 70-year-old uh, son could go to prison for talking about the fact that he almost died because he was poisoned. If you can imagine that. Now, kind of a defining moment for a dad, huh? Uh, excuse me, you just, you just don't do that in America, man. You just don't. Uh, they blocked their congressman. They, had thre they threatened everybody with prison. Most people stop right there. You're drained, destroyed, you're shot. Usually, and they know this, that's, that's how they've developed this system. You're done. You're bankrupt. You're worn out. People get PTSD. They, 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 everything just falls apart. Most people stop right here. If you are an exception to the rule and you keep going, they search your travel records, your credit cards, uh, anything that they can find against you that they can use against you if, if, if they have to go that far. Um, try to find any mistake you've made in your 17, 18, 19, 20 year career. When you travel with the CIA and you're out in some foreign country and you're throwing money around, if they want to find something, they, they'll find it. But that's what they'll do next. Uh, in my case, I was ordered uh, to evacuate, finally evacuate this base. We, 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 uh, they destroyed all of our personal property. Everything in that house, everything we owned was destroyed because it was contaminated. We lost everything. Baby pictures included. Everything. Kids lost all their toys. Everything was destroyed. That part was blacked out in the book, of course. Um, but that's what they did. And, th and then they ordered me to use the government credit card when we evacuated from the house. So as we're traveling, I get a call from a company called ServPro. I'm not down in ServPro, but this particular office, my wife had some uh, priceless heirlooms from her grandma, a table and a buffet and things that were, that were, uh, uh, they were priceless. They were heirlooms. And those are the one things that we had this decontamination company decontaminating because, you know, they're my wife's heirlooms. So I get a call. They say, you pay us the full amount for this decontamination by tomorrow or we're, gonna, we're putting all your wife's stuff out at the curb and pe people can just take it as they will. I said, well, you've, got, you've got tomorrow by 9 o'clock. So I took the credit card and I charged for the decontamination of the stuff that they contaminated my wife's property. They turned around and said, you've abused the government credit card. We're going to get you on that. And I said, no, back up a little bit. You ordered me for, to use that card for the, for the evacuation. You contaminated this stuff. You want to keep fighting, we'll do this. But that's what they tried to do. It's exactly the same procedure. Is what they tried on me. It didn't work. Uh, I have seen this happen many times. I was a counterintelligence investigator. We had cases of internal employees. Many of them had not done a thing. They had blown, uh, well, like, th there was some indication where they were reacting so to some things. And, and I was, one of my strong points was getting them through and finding out it was nothing. But we had some big cases. One of mine went to the president. But... Generally speaking, your average employee are under such stress because they're under investigation in the counterintelligence center. The next step is, well, you know, you're under a lot of stress. You're not sleeping at night. So we recommend you go down to the Office of Medical Services and they'll help you cope with your stress so you can sleep at night. If the employee doesn't know better, they're like, okay. So they march down there and they sit in there with this CIA uh, psychiatrist, many of which were involved in MK Ultra kinds of things. So you're not really dealing with an up above board person and they sit them down and they talk to them about their stress and how to handle it and they're writing down uh, disgruntled paranoid um, insubordination and and then they put that in the file and if it ever does see the light of day if 
if it ever does do it, go to court, what do you think they pull out? Well, we did an analysis of Joe Schmo, and they're disgruntled, they're paranoid. I know, because I sent some people there. And, and now they think they got the documentation, unless people know they do this. Now, now people know they do this. So if they try to pull it, uh, judge or, or, or investigators, now you know you better check and make sure whether this document is legitimate or not. Then what they'll do, I think they did this in, uh, may have done this in uh, Kirk Wiebe's case or, or Thomas Drake. They accuse you of security violations. Uh, you've committed a security violation. They raided Thomas Drake's house because he went and revealed uh, Trailblazer, the NSA domestic surveillance program, nothing classified. Uh, they raided his house. They raided Bill Binney's house. He opened the shower and the FBI had a gun to his head. He committed no crime. So they'll accuse them of a trumped up security violation, which uh, brands them as a security threat. And then they can harass them and surveil them in their own mind. They're, they're now legally can break into their house and surveil them. That's how they do it. That's the system. They've been, they've been utilizing this. There have been thousands of lives that have been destroyed by this system. Thousands of lives. Not just in the CIA and the NSA, but also in the military. Some of you out the military know what I'm talking about because it's happened to you. I've spoken to many of you. Uh, this is the system that they use. It's a refined system of, of entrapment. They do it because it works on most people. What they do strategically then is they begin to destroy the employee financially. If they can't get you, this is how wicked they are. If they can't get you, they'll go for your family. Like the mafia, of course, they've been connected with the mafia. They know those techniques. If they can't get you, they will go to the thing that you love the most, won't they? They'll go to your wife and your kids. They will. And they'll try to destroy you financially. They'll drag you out with, uh, with large legal bills. Um, in my case, they raised all the interest rates on my personal loans within that agency's credit union so they were unaffordable. And when I went in and I demanded to, to see who did it, the uh, head of, the, of this credit union didn't know what they were doing. And he said, my gosh, I've never seen this before. This looks like some kind of retribution. I have him on tape. <laughs> and uh, then they got to him and I called back and he goes, oh, well, I don't know anything about it. I can't talk now. And then the person who wrote the loan disappeared. She doesn't work here anymore. Raised all the interest rates. Then they blocked my retirement funds. I went to OPM and OPM said, well, we've been ordered by your agency not to give you your retirement funds. That's a felony. That is a flat out felony. So I called the OPM and I said, uh, this is so-and-so at the OPM. Do you realize that you're committing a felony by withholding my retirement funds so my family can survive? She's like, I said, no, go, check, go check the regulations. I had my retirement fund in one week. <laughs> I have them on tape, the agency on tape, saying that's why they did it. And this is my evidence building. That's what they'll do. They'll go that far so that your family will not have uh, enough money to survive. They will destroy your family if they have to to shut you up. Again, this is a shadow government. It goes all the way back, blood on the roots, blood on the fruit. They'll drive the employee and their family into financial ruin. Most times the employee is done and they retreat, they're broken, they're sick, they're bankrupt, and it's over for them. And they know that. The psychiatrists know that. They, they're they're well-versed uh, and educated and they've used this multiple times. They know usually it works. The person is broken. Some, I've seen a case like that. This, the, the employee was so devastated, they went out in the woods and killed themselves. And uh, what, what do you have there? Strategy of silence is complete. They've committed the ultimate crime. The person's dead. No more problem for the agency anymore. It's done. Shattered. Ruined. 